So uh, this is the last lab, the lab number 13. And again, let's play with the real data because in the previous lab, we see the wire shark and we also saw how the lab packets can be seen using the ear PKF device or using the MacBook Pro uh, or any MacBook, sorry, not only MacBook Pro, but I think the monitoring mode feature is available in under all the MacBooks. So you can see how the packets in the ear are traveling and you can sniff it. Like you can uh, put your uh, device whether it is a MacBook or you are using the PK, that will uh, make an interface and monitoring mode. And monitoring mode, you can see everything, uh, all the traffic that is flowing in the ear. So as I told you for the wired network, it's very easy. You can, okay. since your ethernet cable is connected okay. there, so you can see, can you please mute your mic? It is interfering. Okay. I muted it. Okay, so uh, for the wired, it is fine, but for the wireless, um, it is uh, quite tricky. So you have to use either extra devices or some device which supports the monitoring mode. So previously I showed you how to inspect the packets using the Wireshark. Today's and today lab, we will be using the MATLAB to get some feature out of that uh, packets that we had captured in the previous labs. Okay. So uh, this is our scenario. Uh, so what I'm going to do, because I want to show you some real time example, right? So for that, I'm considering the camera traffic here. So any, there is a person who is performing some physical activities, maybe the person is moving or stopping or doing anything and the camera is capturing it. And then since this is the Wi-Fi icon, so which means that this is the wireless camera, it is wirelessly sending its frames or packets towards this router and then yeah, uh, this router can be can send send those packets to a local cloud, or if the person is streaming using the uh, seeing the streaming of the camera uh, on mobile uh, remotely, then also you, he can see those packets flowing from the camera to the router, and from the router to the internet, and from the internet to their smartphone. So let's assume that this person is moving. So there is some compression algorithm used in the camera. Compression means that. Uh, and the camera doesn't have to send a lot of packets or a lot of data right, if there is no motion in the scenery. So the camera captures this scene. And if there is motion or if there is anything happening in the scene, it will send high data rate. High data rate means like the high bit rate. Or if there is nothing happening here, then it will send or transfer low bit rate. So we will see that behavior. Like when someone is moving or someone is not moving there, and we should see that kind of fluctuation there in the bit rate. And then we are capturing that bit rate using our wire shark. So the wire shark for the hearing or for the monitoring purpose, we I had put the ear PCAP device, or I, you can also use the MacBook, uh, your MacBook, and you can just filter out the MAC address of this camera. And using the wire shark, you can see the traffic that is flowing from the camera to the router. And then you can save the, the those files in a PCAP file. So I had shown you how to, you have to stop the, uh, uh, stop the traffic and then you have to save it. L let me demonstrate it once again, just for your understanding. So this is the wire shark and uh, I'm just using the ethernet uh, traffic. So if I have to save this traffic, like all the packets, lab packets are coming here. If I have to save it, I will just stop it. And then I will go to the file, then save as, and then I will specify the location and then I will rename it and save it in the form of PK file. And finally, it will gives you a file, something like uh, this file. But this is the PK file that we will be seeing in our today's lab. Okay, so this file actually contain all the packet that we had captured during that duration. So which means that all the packets uh, here, for example. So we stopped it. And I think you just say this is the first packet and the last packet was 2,593. So we captured almost this packets and then that, that PK file, this PK file will contain all these packets. And once we have this real time data, now this is the real time data, right? You can do it in real time. So you can see how the packets are flowing or how they are moving from one uh, source to the destination. So once you are having that uh, real time data, you can extract the feature from that or you can see how the behavior of the packet is. So in our case, we are seeing the traffic here. We are seeing the camera traffic. So we will see that 
once the physical activity is performed by this person, how this camera is reacting to that physical activity by capturing the scene and based on its compression algorithm, how it is sending the battery to, towards the router. And when it is sending the battery towards the router, we are just capturing that red data rate using the ERP cap device. And then in our Wireshark, we are saving it in the form of this PCAP file. Okay, so I hope this is pretty much pretty much clear. Now let me explain you further this scenario. So uh, I had performed this activity. I have captured the packets like this. So I was static for initial fifteen second. So I was static mean I was not moving and I was not moving in front of the camera. So when I was not moving in front of the camera during the first fifteen second, that duration the because of the compression algorithm. If you want to know more about those compression algorithm, you just see it in the Google like H264 or H265, and then you can see how those compression algorithm works. Anyway, uh, you at this level, you don't have to know more about that, but uh, when you are static, the camera will send a lower bit rate. Okay, there is a reason why it is sending a lower bit rate, but just to save the bandwidth, it will send a lower bit rate. So during this period of time, mm, let me take the, during this period of time, the initial 15 second, you will see lower bit rate is sent by the camera because this person is not moving. As the person move in front of the camera during the last 15 second, from 15 to 30 second, you will see the rising. So I think you, if you have studied the registers or the flip flops or those stuff, you must have heard about these terms, the rising edge or the falling edge. So uh, from the static, it will directly convert to the dynamic. So the Y axis shows you the dynamic condition. And from the 15 to 30 second, you will see that the bit rate or the data rate is that it, it will start to uh, rise uh, abruptly or very instantly. So let's use the PK file. Uh, let's use this PK file. Uh, we will import it to the MATLAB. We will extract the feature. Uh, we, will, we will extract the bit rate from it. And then we will see whether our bit rate for the initial 15 second is lower and for the last 15 second, is it higher or not? Okay, so let's do this kind of experiment and the last lab of today. And then we will wrap up this, uh, the lab for all, all the labs for this semester. So before moving to the practical part, do you have any question? If you have any question, I'll take your questions and then I'll move to the practical. So, okay, no question. Uh, let me move to the MATLAB part. So I'll start with a very new screen and let me, uh, let me save it to in the D drive directly. And let's say I'm calling this one main file. And if I'm, I, I need the further functions or something, I'll be creating the uh, new functions. And there is some uh, uh, read pcap file. Uh, so I already created this, that file will, I will just put it here because it's difficult to understand. And uh, as I have told you, like uh, if you have this, uh, for example, this is your uh, frame structure in the uh, pcap, uh, sorry, in the well shark. So, here we have to extract the actual data. So to reach the actual data, we have to read it from that particular field and to reach that particular field, uh, for example, this is the frame number, this is the time, and to extract this time or this frame number or the byte length, I am, okay, uh, there should be the byte length, this one, okay? So this is the payload part, which is when you click on this one, sorry, when you click on this one, can you see the blue part? So it's the, payload part of the data. Payload means that this is the data field of the data. And the one which is not highlighted, which is not blue, that is the header file, okay? So from 17 onward, from here till here, all these information are relating to, uh, from here till uh, here, they are related to the header. And from here till this one, they are all related to the payload part or the data, data part of the section. But to reach this data section, you can see like this is the equivalent hexadecimal representation. So you can see that uh, one byte, two byte, three byte, and if I have to count it till this byte, I have to reach at this point, right? So how much bytes I have before? So, and these bytes are not useless. You can, because the header file contain very important information, for example, the source IP, destination IP, the time at which the packet was captured, and what kind of packet it is. Is it the wireless packet? Is it the wired packet? So all those kind of information are in the header file. So we cannot even ignore it. And from this header file, we, we have to extract those information. So um, I'll give you that file. So I don't have to explain it in this lab, but I'll just show you how can we extract this particular information. Like for example, this 192 byte from the packet. Okay. So let's see how can we do it. 
So let's start from the very scratch, CLC, close all and clear all. Uh, firstly, I have to see where my file is located. So I am I'm having the file here. So I'll just copy this file link. So I copied it. And let's say I am saying that my file is located here. So the directory of my file, um, file is equal to, and then I'll just put it in the double quotes and I'll paste it like this. And this is my file location. So the next part is to read the bit rate data or you can say that uh, maybe the data rate are the bits per second or if the b breeze is so what is the bit per second for here let's define a function and let's call that function is read read bit rate uh, value for example and we may need uh, the file location right so we have to import that file so let's say that this is the location is coming from the main source which is this one okay and then what are the output so we should output two things from here one is the bit rate and the other should be the time at which that bit rate was received right so each second how much bit rate we are transmitting bit rate is bits per second so bit rate will come bits will come from the bit rate and per second will come from the time okay so let's do this part first and then we will go back to the main uh, function and let's not use this let's use our own okay and i'll save this file first so let's let's use it so when you are saving a file, by default, it will be using this name. So th this is the function name and the file will be saved with the function name. So let's say you save the file with the function name, this one, and then later on you are changing, for example, the function here, then it will not be identifiable. Okay, so the, although you did all the changes, but this, this will be different than this one and you cannot save those changes. So please make sure that this name is exactly similar to what you have saved there. Okay, so... Uh, Let's say I have a, a file and I can open you that file from this here, as I told you, because I this is the read pk file. So here, it's uh, if you can understand it, it will be much better. And to understand it, you have to go to the this one. Sorry, where is the? Yeah, you have to go to this one. Click on this one, and then from there you just see how this by and where they are located and if you understood this thing and also you understood how this thing works it means that you understood everything related to the watch uh, watch shark and how the packet uh, the data distribution and the uh, header is uh, there in the packet okay so try to understand try to mimic this file with that one and then let's say i'm uh, creating the object file by using this one so this will create me the object file and let's say i'm calling it p2 uh, or anything just give it your name so p2 is equal to read pc and pcap okay so read pcap and this will create an object file okay and once the object file is created then you can use the p2 and you can create open this file okay so uh, open just open this file so this file will basically locate your file and after opening the file uh, we need to see how much is the length of the total number of packets so like as i gave you in this example showed you, showed you in this example let, let's import the actual file okay so this is my actual file continue without saving and this is the actual file we are, which we will be investigating in today's lab so let's see the whole what is the length of how much packets we have received so if i scroll down to the end uh, we have received 2000 uh, 2159 packets so we should be expecting that number of packets here by using this command so uh, let's say uh, for the number i'm using the end to and the i am saying then that is the length and then this p2 which is the object file because the object file has opened this file and this know everything so what is inside the p2 and show me all so it will give give us the p2 all and then what is the length of that and finally the length will be saved in the n2 okay 
so let me also comment this one how this are dear okay so uh now uh i have this much packets right so i have the this i understood that i have this much packet but i have to start i have to start from the first one right so to start from the first one i should say let's say p2 should be uh uh starting from this uh, it should be from the start so there is a uh, from underscore start so from start will enforce it to start from the top packet our first packet okay and then okay um if you compute the sorry if you this is your first one right so the how much data you have let's say i'm opening the calculator the actual frame size is 649 so it is 649 but the data field which is related to not the header field i'm subtracting the header field from the data field and how much i have so it is uh, equal to 615 which is this one right and if i see this is equal to 34 so i only want to see the data field i don't want to see the header field because the header field is fixed it is 34 and it will be 34 for all for instance if i want to see this one or this one packet and let's say the frame size is there uh, 627 minus I subtract 593 from there and it will again give me the 34. So it is 34 for every instance, uh, for every packet. So let's discard this one. Let's not um, consider it anymore. Header underscore length is equal to 34. So we understood what the header uh, length is. And um, so uh, let me also, which is the uh, total length of the packet. Uh, let's say for the packet i'm saying this one minus header of the packet so that's all and now let's start from the first packet which is from here and we have to reach to the end two okay so start from first and to reach there uh, let's put some condition and to put that condition let's say we know the ending point which is n2 right so let's let's declare another variable which is k2 is equal to one so and then use a while loop while k2 which is the first packet is less than the n2 right so i think it's not that much complicated and this is the end so let's put everything inside the body so uh, until we reach the end inside the body let's say uh I'm saying that F2 is equal to, so each time it is checking this condition. So the first is less than the total length. So if it is less, then it should move to the next packet like this. It will go and check what is the byte length of this one. And once it check the byte length of this one, then it will, it has to move to the second one, right? The next packet. So it will see one is less than the last packet, which is 2159. So of course one is less than that. And if it is less than that, then it has to move to the second packet. And then it has to check that two is less than this one. And if it is less than that one, then yeah, it has to move to the third one. And likewise, if when it reaches to 2159, it has to check whether it is less than that. No, it is not. And then it will finish the file and the while loop will be finished. Okay, so uh, let's say uh, P2, F2 is actually containing the information related to the P2. And what is the P2? P2 is actually starting from the start. And what is the start? It is the first packet. And I'm saying that just move it to the next one. Okay, so it will just uh, increment the, uh, increment it to the next packet. So increment it to the next packet. Yeah, that's it. And if what if there is a packet here? What if there is a corrupted packet here or the packet which is received, but there is null, there is null data or nothing there. So if there is nothing, then just break the loop because the data is corrupted and we don't need it anymore. So if there is a built-in function is empty and what is empty? F2, if there is nothing in F2, uh, for example, here is here any blank packet or useless packet and or instead of blank i should use the useless okay useless packet and if there is a useless packet dast display and what to display 
no more friends. Yeah, one more thing can happen. For example, you are here, you reach to this point, you reach to 2159 point, and then P2 next. P2 next will give us give you nothing, which means that the F2 is blank. And if it is blank, F2 is blank, it means that you have already reached to the last packet, right? And you have nothing more ahead. So there is nothing there. And that means that no more frames, the number of frames are finished, and you have to break the loop. You have to go out of the while loop, that's it. Okay, so that can also be happening. And finally, uh, if there is no blank packet, if it is just going next and the initial, the current packet is less than the last packet available, then just read the payload or, yeah, I think payload um, of the bit rate. And just we, since I'm using starting this from one and, and I'll be keep incrementing, for example, I'm um, keep incrementing here. K2 is equal to K2 plus one. Right, and then I should be saying that the length of uh, what is the length of the packet, which is this one F2 dot, and then payload part. So I'll show you this one because when you create the object file, the object file will also contain a field uh, uh, structure which is the payload part, and from there it will just check the length, what is the length there, and it will put that length into this payload part. And this is done by this read capture file. So you are not actually doing it, okay? And then minus what sh I should have to subtract. I should subtract this header length because I don't need to use that fixed length there. So it will give you only the payload part of the packet. And that's it, I think. So the payload part is read from here. And now let's also uh, read the timestamp. So the timestamp can be read it almost in the same way. So let's also uh, use this K2 here. And we want to uh, save the time in the timestamp for each time we are reading the byte length. So the, when this byte length is read, that consecutive timestamp is also saved in this variable, which we call the timestamp. But uh, I'll show you the reason. Uh, this is kind of raw timestamp, so we have to further clean it up. So let's further uh, read this timestamp. So I am reading it from the double. So from then again, I'll go to the, my object file, and my object file is again from coming from here. And from there, I'm reading the header. So from the header, as I told you before, that the wire shark, this one, uh, here, for example, if you are, if you double click on this one, so all the information from here to here, from 17 onward, for example, here, 17 onward, they belongs to the payload part, but the information prior to this one, before the 17, they are your the uh, header information, and they contain a lot of information, which you can see it from here. It can contain the IP addresses, the source IP, destination IP, the time, and all those stuff. So we can extract the time information from this header, given header file. So, uh, I have to go, go to the header and from there inside the header, I'm saying that TS underscore SEC. So all these things I have defined it in the read PK, read PK file. So uh, you don't have to worry about this one. Just uh, you have to, when the object file is created that I'll show you just in a while. There from the object file, uh, it will read the timestamp, uh, the timestamp from the actual timestamp. Uh, but I have to add something further. Again, almost the same thing, for example, here but in the microsecond divided by the 1e6. Why I'm doing this? Because each time this value might be uh, similar because the packets are coming and the timestamp it is with done with some timestamp, right? But if I don't increment it with the value, with this value, then it will give me only one fixed value for all the x's, for all the x-axis. That's why I'm adding this value with every this one. If you have any doubt, you can just delete this one and you can see what is the value given before. And when you add this one, then you can also see what the value is there after. So uh, that will show you the main difference before and after, and then also see why I did this, okay? And then I should also increment this K2. So K2 is equal to K2 plus one. So each time um, this loop is running because this K is starting from one and then it has to go to the all the length. For example, uh, if I consider our file, uh, let me open the OR shark. And then let me also open up the file that we are going to consider and I import it here. So mm, it has started from the first packet and it will go up to the ending packet. So which is 2,159 and each time it is 
kept incrementing. So the P2 next will go to this one, then P2 next will go to this one. And while this is up to this part, so while this is not reached here, when this point is reached, then this will be violated, this condition will be violated and it will break up, it will break this while loop. Okay, so this uh, K2 is keep incrementing each time, this K2 is incrementing and then it has been compared with in the while loop. And in that index, the value are stored. So what kind of uh, payload is there and what time at what time that payload has been stored. So let's see this uh, rabbit rate and the raw time there in the uh, actual uh, main file. So this is our main file, which uh, I have given the location from there. But before that, I think I should also provide the name for this one because without this, this is incomplete, right? So uh, backslash, yeah. So this is the location for that file. And then I should use the, I should call that function. So what is the function? So, uh, sorry, the function is this one. And then I should go there, I should put the function here. And what is the file path? So the file path is this one. And this is equal to, it gives me two, 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 two parameters. And one of the parameter is the payload part and the other is the time. So I can go back there and I can say that there are two parameters. One is, let's say the raw, let's say raw bit rate. And the other one is the raw underscore time. Okay. so two parameters uh, have given by this uh, thing. If I run it, I'll see something. And yeah, what is the time B? And I think it should be defined there. So time B, it should be equal to, yeah, sorry for this one. Uh, I'm saying that, let's say I'm not talking about the time B for now. I'm just giving the raw time. So it will just keep, take this raw time from there. And if I run it, then I should see two things, rabbit rate and raw time. If I plot it, then you can see something very strange. Firstly, the bit rate, it looks very messy because it is the rabbit rate. And initially the user was static, but uh, it's still like some spikes can be seen there. And then you can see also the uh, dynamic states like the variation that is happening here, but still not very clear. And if you look at the x axis, the time also doesn't make any sense because it is some raw value like 1.6 something, thing, blah blah blah, and 2 10, 10 raised multiplied by 10 power 9, which is a very big value. But if we clear, if we carefully observe this value, we can see some changes at the end of the value, for example, 5, 6. Seven, eight. So the last digit is changing. Like until the seven, three, they are constant. This value is constant, but only the last digit is changing. Five, six, seven. So how about we do something like we define this kind of value, like uh, before the last value, we and we subtract it from all of the x axis value. So if we subtract it from x axis value, it will give us some meaningful result. So let's go again to the bit rate part and let's uh, let's play with this one. So. Uh, if I take this part, let's say I am defining the offset. So the offset is uh, basically the value that we want to subtract from the uh, timestamp so that we can get a clear timestamp value. So uh, I will say that floor, then minimum of the, sorry, minimum of the timestamp. So I'm trying to select the so from this value, from this value, I'm going to choose the minimum of the timestamp. So the minimum of timestamp will basically give me something like uh, this one, some something like that, which which will become an offset. And then I, I can simply uh, just subtract this offset from the timestamp and that will give me the actual. So if I call it time B is equal to uh, timestamp minus double of the offset. So if I subtract this timestamp from this double of the offset, then it will give me the actual time value. And if I just uh, export it to, from the function, this value, I've gi I give it uh, to the output, then I can see some meaningful results. So now it's not raw time anymore. It will be the actual time. And if I run it, then I can, sorry, I can just plot it like that. And now you can see the time is now okay. So from zero to 15, I can see some lower fluctuation from 15 to 30, I can see some higher fluctuations. 
but still the fluctuation doesn't make any sense because we can see the spikes here right those spikes are not meaningful for us because we cannot see a clear difference when we are static from 0 to 15 and when we are moving from 50 to 30. All these spikes have some meaning. If you read about the compression technique of H264 or 265, then you will understand that why we have these kind of spikes. But let's not go into that detail. And let me, uh, let's, let's do some cleaning. Let's do some filtering out of these spikes. So we want to filter out all these unnecessary spikes and we want to see the cleaner version of this data. So this is the raw data. It is like composed of a lot of spikes or a lot of errors, a lot of noise. But when we apply some filters on it, then it will clean up this data and you will be able to see a very clean version of this one. So uh, for doing that, uh, let's define another function. For example, I am defining a function with the bitrate feature let's say i'm calling it this one and let's say i'm getting the rabbit right here and also i'm getting the time here so i think it, it's not necessary to get the time um, this time because this time will be similar for all the cases but anyway i'm going to take it so that it goes from here from this function and we see something some coherence there so i'll just uh, put this function here and here i can just copy this part like this and i can paste it like that and instead of rabbit rate i can see that, that this is the clean bit rate and that is fine so let me also uh, do some comment uh, bit rate and time and this is the after this when we clean it up uh, we see the clean bit rate and time Okay, so let's define this function now. So if I go to this one, I will firstly save it. And after saving it, I will just delete all these unnecessary parts. I will say that this is my clean bit rate, uh, clean B, and this is my time. So the time is actually, uh, let's, let's say time out, time O or time B. Okay, so actually this one is the same as, this is, the same as this one. So we are not doing any further contribution here. It will be remain the same. And what we are doing, we are only actually playing with this one. We, we, uh, we are, sorry, we are actually playing with this one. This one, the input that is coming to the, on the input, right? So firstly, let's say I'm saying that, that my bit rate one, uh, I have to apply some filters, right? Before I want to remove the spike. So there are some unnecessary spikes, right? So to remove those spikes, there is a filter which we call the uh, Humble filter, or oh, it's already there. So the Humble filter, if you look at the feature of the Humble filter, if there is like, there are spikes there, then you can just filter out those spikes and you can get a clean version of that data. So you have to just search for this like Humble filter MATLAB and you can just go to this one. And these are the outliers. These spikes are the kind of outlier which are being removed by the Humble filter. Just copy the function of the Humble filter and apply it to the bit rate, which is this one. So I'm applying the Humble filter and I'm applying it to the input raw bit rate. And this will try to filter out the unnecessary spikes, but still these kind of congested uh, spike are there and they, they don't look good. So we also have to filter out those one. So we should use some time domain filter. Uh, for example, the moving median uh, median uh, filter MATLAB, moving median MATLAB. So if I see the syntax of moving median, it is this one, but moving median before applying the moving median, uh, let me explain you something how the moving median works so for example this is from here to here is your data right moving median will just move like that move over your data and it will takes it will have some window it will consider that window and it will take the median of that and then it will move further again it will take the median and then it will move further like this and it will take the median of that i think there should be some figure or some yeah here so if you look at this figure, you know this K, K is your window size. So at move over A. So before, when it starts from zero, the K value is three. So the window size is three. So initially it will consider the first three blocks. It will take the median of that and it will replace the zero value with that median value. And then it will just move by one index. And from two to one, from this value, it will take the median again. And then it will replace the two value with that median and then and that and so forth. So if we look at our figure, 
for example if we consider a median for example for 100 uh, data 100 uh, packets so it will take the 100 packets median and it will replace the first median data with this one and then it will keep moving like that and finally it will just replace it will clean up the data so you can see also the dynamic and static you will see it very clearly so um i'm going to show it to you like uh, let's say i'm saying that this is the bit rate one uh, and bit rate one will take the uh, moving median so what is the i don't remember it exactly so i can go and just copy it from the here so take the moving median filter which is the built in matlab filter and let's say i'm assuming the smoothing window smoothing window is equal to 100 so i'm using 100 of the smoothing window and then i am taking the bit rate value and i am using this smoothing window over the bit rate values so this will give me the uh, moving median filter uh, filtered value but still if i want to further filter out this value i i can also apply the 1d median filter again that way so uh, it will further the um, clean up your data if there is like abrupt change anywhere so it will further result in smoothing your that particular data and it will give you a very clean data so uh, i can just simply say that let's say the this is my better value which has been smoothed already uh, median filter is applied on this data and i'm saying that each time consider the window size of 20 and then apply this moving median filter and finally i'm calling it the clean bit rate so this is the clean bit rate data so the clean bit rate data will get the data from here and finally it will store it here and then we can get the output from there so after this one uh, i will just save this bit rate feature value and i will go back to my this function and i will run it like this and um uh, there is some error and the error is the bit rate and because the bit rate is not defined so it's not bit rate and if i just this one also the time is there okay i think i'm not uh so what is the bit rate feature value so if i control c and then control v because your function name should be very coherent with what you have said uh, named there if you are right, reading anything else then it means that you are doing it wrong and it will not be giving you the exact answer because that function is not defined there so whatever the function name you use there for example you use the bit rate value so you have to use exactly the same name with that one if you use it different from there then you won't be able to see the difference so i can say that the time and the clean bit rate i can plot it and now you can see they show a very clear behavior you can see that from 0 to 15 it's like seems static and from 15 to 30 it seems uh, dynamic okay so uh, let's uh, uh, plot plot the, uh, plot them all but before plotting them uh, i also want to show you some uh, thing which was related to this one so let's debug it like uh, yeah here tell here let's let me remove this debug and let me show you um, uh, how how did we get this fellow part and we also have to check it with our um, actual file whether it is correct or not so uh, i'll go to the main file and i will run it uh, sorry this one is the main file so i will run it and finally it will give me the payload part so if i double click on the payload part i will get several values and now let me go to that file so it's at the desktop and then this one the file and let me open the wireshark too so this is the wireshark i'll just want i just want to make sure that whatever the value i have here it should be exactly the same as uh, what i'm getting um, and the matlab so if i see the first packet so the first packet value is 615 since i'm not reading the whole byte but i'm only reading i'm not reading the whole uh, bytes of the packet which is also, which also include the header file because we have already subtracted the header length which was 34 byte so we only see the the payload part so if you see the 615 so this is the first packet the 615 if i see the second packet 615 it is again the payload here is 615 the third packet 593 so it is 593 and the 593 here four packet 593 593 fifth 615 615 
Let, let's pick some random packet here, some random metal, for example, 1084. So if I want to see the 1084 packet here, sorry, it's 1084. So 10, if I want to see the 1084 packet here, it is 1080, right? 1085 should be 1080, and it is also 1080. 1087, I want to see 1087, it is 425 byte and it is also 425 byte, which means that all the data we which we have acquired from this payload part using our code, it is exactly the same as what we have seen here in the uh, wire chart. Uh, okay, so this part is now clear. And uh, of one more thing I wanted to make you clear that if you see the data, it is the final data is 20. 2159 and if we see it in the wire shark as well here the final data is 2159 so this if you scroll it down it is the final data which is 2159 and also the 2159 so starting from the first if you see here so we started from one right k2 was one so it started from this one each time the loop was running it is it was going to the next packet so which means that it was going to the next one next one next one like that and when you reach here when you reach to the final value here this one then this f2 will not find any other value because the f2 dot next is nothing so if there is nothing then it means that we are reached to the final point and just break and it will break up the while loop right otherwise each time when we are at particular state we should be reading that payload part and also from the header file since i told you that this is the uh, you have not only the data part but you also have the payload part so this is the payload part and before this payload part then you have the data part. so up to the 45 you have the payload but before the 45 you have the uh, all the information related to these things so they are they are the headers and inside the header you can extract for example this is my timing so i can extract this information from somewhere there so um, that's why i use this header dot t underscore second so if i open up the f2 if i open the f2 i have the headers if i open the headers i have these values like this is the second values the time value in uh, seconds and this is the time values in microseconds so since I had this kind of offset, so firstly I derived the offset from there, and then I subtracted that offset, that offset which is this value from the timestamp, which is the, this value. So the timestamp was always giving me a very big value in terms of like there was some change in the last bit, but it was giving me value into 10 to the power nine. So if you subtract the offset from there, you will get only the time which is um, which is what you desire. Okay, so if we go out of here you will get the time, which is this one. So it's starting from this time and it will give you the actual time, which, which is up to the 30 seconds. Okay, so that's it. And now let's go back to this part. So uh, here, this camera was capturing this activity and the activity was static for 15 seconds and uh, then moving for 30 seconds, uh, from 15 to 30 seconds. So let's plot these, uh, let's, let's plot it, all of them. Firstly, I have to plot the figure one. And inside the figure one, I have to plot the time, comma, the rabbit rate. And that's it. Then uh, I also, let's, let me label it. Label, X label is the time. And the Y label is the rabbit rate, which is in the BPS, rabbit per second. And then let's say the grid on and that's it okay that, that is enough so i will take this one and i will just simply paste it here and then there's the figure number two and instead of the rabbit rate i'll just plot the clean better time is time so they are same and then again all the things are similar and then i want to plot both of them together so sorry not this one i want to make an, a third figure and want to plot plot all of them so before that i want to plot this one and then hold on and then the clean so the rabbit rate and then the clean bit rate. and let's see all of them together so if i make this line a bit thicker so that we can see the difference 
So uh, from zero to 15 seconds, here you could not see any difference. Uh, everything is very fluctuating, but from zero to 15 seconds, after applying the filter, you see it's very clean and lower bit rate is transferred because of the compression algorithm. And then from 15 to 30 seconds, you can see that it's uh, high bit rate transfer. And if you, after when you want to see both the values, which is not filtered and the filter value, then you can see that the value after 15, they are higher bit, bit rate transmission. There is high BPS and before there is lower BPS. So um, we were performing this activity there and then the camera was capturing that activity and then the bit rate was transferred to the router. Meanwhile, when the bit rate was transferred to the router, we sniffed it using our device and then we captured all those information using the Wireshark in the real time. So the Wireshark was capturing all the information in the real time. And after doing that, after doing that, we when, once we capture all the information, we saved it and then we imported it to the MATLAB and we processed it further. So here is our processed result that we can compare it with this one. So uh, if I just enlarge it like this and here. So if I show you all together from zero to 15 seconds, since this is the static condition of this person, it was not moving. So from zero to 15, you can see a lower battery transmission. But after the 15 to 30 seconds, which is this duration, and the person is completely moving, then you can see that this there is the rising edge and this this much of the uh, battery has been received. So the total packets that we can see here in the, uh, the file, no, no, whether the MATLAB or this Wireshark, So all these almost 2,159 packets, they were all received during this 30 second. So it means that each second, uh, 2,159 divided by 30. So each second we were receiving almost 79.96 uh, of packets, which means uh, that the frequency of the packet, the capture packet was almost 72. So we were receiving 72 packets each second and we were moving for 30 seconds. And for 30 seconds, the different packets were captured. And finally, we captured up to this much of the uh, packets, total number of packets. So uh, that is all for today. And if you have any question, you can ask me through email. And I hope uh, that is all for today. And if, um, regarding exam or the assignment, if there is anything you have to ask, then just send me the email and I will re reply you uh, instantly. So yeah, that's all. And best of luck for your final exam. This is the final lab and we are going to wind it up and good luck for your exam. Thank you all.